Hey guys, today I want to show you how you can set up a cron job to automatically schedule jobs on your system. And then I'll show you how we can run Python scripts with a cron job. It's not too complicated, but there are a few pitfalls where we have to be careful. So these commands only work on Mac and Linux. On Windows, it's a little bit different, but there you can use a tool that's called Task Scheduler, which is also not too complicated. So you can still benefit from this tutorial by learning about cron jobs in general and the pitfalls when we want to run a Python script. So let's start. So on Mac and Linux, we have a built-in tool that is called crontab and we can list all the available jobs that are scheduled on my system right now with saying crontab minus L. And then we see this syntax. So we have five different options to specify the time and then we have the command. And right now this is commented out like a Python comment with a hashtag. So right now this is actually not scheduled. So before we learn how we can run Python script with this, let's first learn about the syntax. And for this, I recommend a very nice site that is called crontop.guru. So here you can play around with all the available options and then you get an immediate feedback when this should run. So as I said, we have five different items. The first one uh, specifies the minute, then the hour, then the day of the month, then the month and then the weekday. And for each item, we see all the available um, options down here. So we can just use an asterisk for any value. We can also use a list, a range or a step. So we will see how this works in a couple of moments. And then we will see all the available values. So for a minute, we can use values between zero and 59. So right now, if I just use an asterisk, then we see this should run at every minute. And we also see the next time when this is scheduled and we can expand this and then see all the uh, next times. So this is really helpful. So I recommend to play around with this. So for example, now if I use a zero here, then we see this runs at minute zero. So essentially at every full hour. Then if I use a value for the hour, so at every hour zero, um, then we will see that this runs at every minute for the hour zero. Then the next one specifies the day. So here we can use values from one to 31. So if I just use one, then this runs at the first of the month. Then we can specify the month. So here we have values from one to 12. So if I use one, then it's January, two is February and so on. And the last one specifies the weekday. So here we use values from zero to six and zero means Sunday. So yeah, these are all the available options. So let's do a few examples to get familiar with this. So first, let's say we want to schedule a job at midnight on every first of the month. So for this, we use a one here. So for every first day of the month, and then for midnight, we say hour is zero and also minute is zero. So don't forget to um, replace this asterisk. So a lot of beginners forget to set this. And so this means that it would run for every minute at hour zero. So yeah, zero, zero means midnight. Then for example, let's say we want to run a job at each hour on Sunday. So for this, we specify the weekday. So as I said, zero is Sunday. And then for each hour, then we have to set the minute to zero. And we also see the feedback. So this means at minute zero on Sunday and then for each hour. So if we expand this, then we see it's at zero at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. and so on. Then let's have a look how we can use these list and range and step options. So for example, let's say again, we want to schedule a job at midnight on the first of every month, but also at the 15th of every month. 
So again, we use zero, zero here. And then for the day of the month, we can use one and then a comma and then multiple options, for example, 15 or 30. And then we see this runs on the first, the 15th and the 30th. So this is how we use a list. Um, then let's say we want to use a range. For example, we want, we want to run this for the first seven days. Then we can say one to seven here. And now let's say we want to run this every 10 minutes. So then we use this asterisk and then a slash and then the step value. So in this example, 10. And then this runs every 10 minutes. So, and we also get this here every 10th minute and then only for the hour zero and for the first seven days in the month. All right, so again, I recommend to play around with the site. So now let's have a look how we use the syntax and now schedule a actual Python script with this. So for this, let's go back to the command line. And now instead of saying crontub minus L, we say crontub minus E. This is for edit mode. And now this will open up the default editor. So if I quit this again, so and echo my default editor, then you will see that this is Vim on my machine. So if you're not comfortable with using Vim, you can also change this by saying export and then dollar editor and then the new value. For example, you can use the nano editor. And now if you echo this again, then we should see the updated variable and actually I made a mistake here. So when we export this, then we just say editor and this is nano. And now when we echo this, we have to reference this with the dollar sign. So now it should work. So now I change this back to Vim. So I'm not a Vim expert, but I'm comfortable with the basic commands. Okay, so before we schedule this in our crontab file, first let's have a look at the actual Python script. So for this, I have two examples. And what we do here is we import logging and then we set the file name and then we create a logger and we create a file handler. So we want to lock this in a file. And if you don't know how to use logging in Python, then I have a tutorial about this that I will link here. So check that out. And then we set up a simple function, define do logging. And here we simply say logger.info test. And we also want to say if the under name equals main, then we want to execute this function. So the first thing you should remember is to use this syntax and only run this as your main process. And the second one is here to use the full path to this file. So if you just say file name equals and then for example, test.log, then this will run if we execute this from in here. So now let's say Python tests.py and then we see this log file appeared here in the folder. But if you run this as a cron job, then this file might actually end up somewhere else. So we want to use the full path here to this directory. So let's quickly print this whole file name and see how this looks. So now if I print this again, then we see this is the full uh, path to this file. So I recommend to use this. So now let's see how we um, schedule this as a cron job. So for this, let's go back to our terminal and let's clear this. And then let's say cron tab minus E and then go into insert mode. And now let's specify the time. So for this simple example, I want to run it at every minute. And then the command is Python and then the full path to this file name. So I copy and paste this in here. So this is in my home directory slash code slash Python task automation slash test.py. And now I say escape and then save and quit this. And now it says crontab installing new crontab. So now this should run. So now let's actually have a look at this 
folder here and now it should log into this file. So now let's track the current time. So I can go to time.is and we see, oh yeah, actually already it already worked. So we see the next logging event happened here at 3, 5 p.m. So now let's actually wait for another minute to pass and see if this works. All right, so the minute is almost over. So now it should, yeah, it worked. So now we see uh, the new logging event appeared in our file. So this works. So now let's actually say crontab minus E again, and then let's uh, comment this out again and save this file. So now let's have a look at a second example. And for this, we use a third party library requests. And then we do the same thing. So we set up our logger. And now what we want to do is we want to send a get request to the GitHub API. And this is, by the way, a public uh, API. So we don't need a token or anything for this. And here we grab the latest uh, events from my account. And if one is available, then we simply lock this last event. And then again, the same if name equals main, then we execute this. So now the difference here is that we use this third party module. And of course, we have to install this. So now if I simply run this by saying Python fetch github.py, then this does not work. So for this, we get a import error, no module named requests. So now to install this, I actually recommend to use a virtual environment. And for this, we have multiple options and I want to show you two of them. So the first one is to use a Conda environment and the other one is to use a VNV. So for the Conda environment, let's list all the available Conda environments I have here by saying Conda and list. And if you don't know how this works, then I also have a tutorial about this that I will link here. And now we see I already have multiple environments here. And the one that I want to use now is this Py 3.8 environment. So in here, I already installed the requests module. So now we want to say crontab minus e and then for the python command we want to use the full path to this environment so now let's go into edit mode and i'll actually copy and paste this in here and then i will show you how this should look like so you need the path to this environment and then slash bin and then slash python and then again the full path to your file name so now if we, before we actually save this, let's test this command. So let's copy this and then let's go to our editor, uh, to our terminal in here and now copy and paste this. And now this actually worked. So yeah, we see our events file got created and here it locked the latest event from my GitHub account. So now let's delete this again. And then in here, let's um, save and quit this. And then again, it says crontab installing new crontab. So now if we um, have a look at this um, folder again, and now if we track the current time, so now we have to wait for the next full minute. And now the minute is over and yeah here it appeared it took around two more seconds but that's okay so yeah this worked so now let's go ahead and again say crontab minus e and let's comment this out again and now i want to show you the last option so for the last option i want to show you how to use the vnv so of course first we have to create one by saying python 3 minus m vnv vnv then we want to activate it by saying dot vn slash bin slash activate. And now we see it got activated. And now we say pip install requests. And now this was installed. So now if we say python fetch github.py, then this should work in here. So if we go to the events.log, then we see a new entry appeared. 
So this works. So now again, let's say crontab minus E. And now in here, let me copy and paste this command. So now basically this is the same as this one. So the same full path to our file. But now here we use the path to our VNF that we just created. So it's the same full path to this folder, my home directory slash code slash slash Python task automation slash VNF slash bin slash Python and then the file name and now let's hit escape and save and quit this and then again it's installing this cron tab so now again let's have a look at this file and have a look at the time so we have to wait five more seconds and now again this new entry appeared in here so yeah this worked so now you know how to do this. So now let's again say cron tab minus L and list all the current uh, cron jobs that we have. So yeah, remember um, to use the full path to your uh, file. And if you use a virtual env, then you also have to specify the full path to this Python version. So that's what you have to remember. And then you can go ahead and schedule your own jobs with this cron tab. So yeah, I hope this was helpful and you enjoyed this tutorial and if you liked it, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and then see you in the next video. Bye.